Some breaking NFL news. The much-rumored, much-discussed Julio Jones trade is going down as the Atlanta Falcons have agreed to a deal to ship Julio Jones to the Tennessee Titans. Now, this is not yet officially official. There's a physical to go through as well, but we do have the trade details for you guys per Ian Rappaport. The Titans, of course, they're getting Julio Jones, the centerpiece of this deal, along with a 2023 sixth round selection. The Falcons, meanwhile, are getting back a 2022 second round pick and a 2023 fourth rounder. Now, previously there had been some discussion, was it going to be a fifth round pick or some combination of late round draft swaps? It ends up being the latter, with the Falcons getting two pretty intriguing draft assets for Julio Jones, who in reality, the market never materialized in the way the Falcons wanted. They leaked the first round offer, Clearly, as you can tell, based on what they got in exchange for Julio, that was never really there. So who do you guys think won this trade? The biggest one, at least for now. I guess we'll see what happens with, uh, elsewhere in the NFL offseason. But who do you think won? Get your votes in for me right now in the comments section. I better see hundreds, if not thousands of them in here. Type F for the Falcons or type in T for the Titans. Let me know who you guys think won this deal. Over to the Falcons side of the Julio Jones trade. Now, as I'm sure everyone watching knows, the Julio drama had been everywhere. He wanted to be traded. He'd requested it. The Falcons were shopping him. They had a first round pick offer, which I mean, I think it's pretty clear based on the return. They did not have that out there. The big reason, at least part of the big reason why this deal goes down, is the Falcons are saving salary cap space. About $15 million in cap space is what they save with this move. Helps them pay their rookies, puts them into a better position long term in terms of building around expensive Matt Ryan. Calvin Ridley's due for his new deal. More on that in a little bit. But this move does hurt the Falcons in the short term. A team that I think is still trying to win games right now with Matt Ryan, the drafting of Kyle Pitts in the first round as well. This does thin, thin things out a little bit for Atlanta. Calvin Ridley is now unquestionably wide receiver one. Russell Gage is now, I think, wide receiver two. Wide receiver three is a little bit dicey. Is it Olamide Olamide Zacchaeus? Does Frank Darby emerge? It's just not a great receiver room as things currently sit for Atlanta. I wonder if maybe another move is coming down the road, or maybe you see a ton of two tight end sets with Hayden Hurst and almost the receiver himself, Kyle Pitts. That would be my prediction here as we sit. Now, as a reminder, in case you weren't paying attention earlier, the Titans are getting Julio Jones a 2023 sixth round pick, a 2022 second and a 2023 fourth round selection. That's what Atlanta's getting back. So did they get enough? In a bubble, I think the answer's no. But as I've tried to warn people who have, you know, watched the show before, I never thought the market for Julio Jones was nearly as strong as what it should be. Because of his age, his injury history, and his contract situation, a second and change for Julio Kind of about what I thought it might end up going for. In a bubble, the answer is no. They did not get enough in return. But let me know what you guys think. Type your votes for me. Why for yes or and for no. The big winner of this deal, I guess, for the Falcons standpoint, is Calvin Ridley. This is now the team's number one receiver. He's about to get a bag in the not-too-distant future of his own because the salary cap's going to explode. And now he is the unquestioned wide receiver one. He played really well last year. As a reminder, a little under half the games without his running mate, Julio Jones. 90 catches, well over 1,300 yards, 9 scores. Ridley's been awesome for Atlanta. He takes over now that wide receiver one spot. And kind of flying under the radar, by the way, Russell Gage. I don't think many people outside of Atlanta realize how productive he was last season. 72 catches, 786 yards, four scores. You throw in Kyle Pitts in that conversation as well, and the Falcons have some playmakers. Now, they will miss Julio Jones. There is no doubt about that. Perhaps they're taking the... We, 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 we would rather trade a player a year too early than a year too late. But we'll see how Gage fares in a much more prominent role in Atlanta now without Julio Jones going forward. Now, we here at Chat Sports keep you guys updated with all the latest NFL news and rumors. We've talked a lot about Julio over the past couple weeks. 
Tennessee was kind of my prediction in the end, so it looks pretty smart, at least for the time being on that one. But if you guys want more NFL news and you want daily videos on what's going on, including mailbags answering your guys' questions, hit that big red button and subscribe today. Let's get into the Titans side of it. Since, you know, they're the one getting the superstar receiver back in the trade, they now get to pair Julio Jones with A.J. Brown, forming one of the best one-two punches in the NFL at wide receiver. In terms of duos, a healthy Julio Jones with the way A.J. Brown has played in recent years is certainly up there with one of the best duos in the NFL. Now, I do want to keep an eye out for this, namely the potentiality of Julio Jones searching for a new contract. There had been some reports and or speculation that, hey, you know, maybe Julio wants to go get a new deal and he's looking to get paid again because after this upcoming season where he's due about $15 million, the guaranteed money is very small. So at some point, I have a feeling Julio and his agents will be looking for a new contract. Of course, they're hoping first and foremost that Julio stays healthy this season. The market was not nearly as strong as you might have otherwise suspected for a player of Julio Jones' caliber, due in large part to injuries. He missed nine games this past season. Still, in those nine games... 51 grabs, 771 yards, along with three touchdowns. That's an average of about 86 yards per game. Had he played an entire season, his statistical production would have looked very similar to what we saw in 2019. You know, nearly 100 catches, almost 1,400 yards. His average not quite as good, but still six touchdowns as well. So for Tennessee, an organization right now that is all in on trying to get a championship with an expensive running back in Derrick Henry, a highly paid quarterback in Ryan Tannehill as well. The, the cost of going after Julio, a second round pick and a future fourth in exchange for a sixth, is at least somewhat appealing. And now in terms of their wide receiver room, well, things start to make sense for Tennessee. A.J. Brown, Julio Jones, you can call them 1A, 1B if you want. They're both awesome. Josh Reynolds now slots in at a much more... I don't know if comfortable was the right word there, but better fitting role for him as wide receiver three with some depth pieces there as well. This move by Tennessee is to go all in and win once again. A very winnable AFC South. Houston is rebuilding. Jacksonville's not there yet with Urban Meyer and Trevor Lawrence. The Colts are banking on Carson Wentz. I think Tennessee, I would argue fairly comfortably actually, is the favorite in this division, or at least that they should be. This is a good Tennessee Titans football team. I love being aggressive. As long as Julio Jones stays healthy, it's certainly a good move for Tennessee. Second round pick and a swap of day three selections. There might be some question marks from other NFL teams going, wait, how is that all the Falcons got back in exchange for Julio Jones? So on Tennessee here, make your predictions for me. How many games, remember, 17-game season this year, do you believe the Tennessee Titans will end up winning? Get your votes in for me in the comments section. How many games will Tennessee win in 2021? 